You're now watching the Mike Missinelli Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a special edition of the Mike Missinelli Podcast. We are doing this moments after the Sixers have lost game four at home at the uh, Wells Fargo Center, and they lose it today 97 to 92. And uh, for my money, and I know people don't want to hear this, but this happens to be the reality. I've been through too many of, the, of these things. The Sixers' season is over. Uh, if you think that this team is potent enough in many different areas to have to win two games at Madison Square Garden after what happened today, well, uh, I'm, I'm not riding with you. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you want to think that, and maybe you think it's possible, uh, and maybe it is. I just don't feel it. So let's break down the sad tale of the Philadelphia 76ers today. You know, uh, there's an obvious, besides Jalen Brunson, in one of the greatest performances I have ever seen in the playoffs, um, you can look at what the Sixers did not do in the game and pin that on why they lost the game. Now, let's just, just go over what Jalen Brunson did. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a performance for the ages for a 6-1 guard to control the game like he did. As he was 18 for 34, he makes two three-pointers and nine for 11 free throws, 10 assists, and one turnover. In a game that had a hot cauldron atmosphere, this dude scored on everybody they put in front of him. And uh, I am just wowed by this kid. I, I am stunned and wowed that this kid is able to dominate a game in, in in almost more ways than Allen Iverson used to. I mean, this is just phenomenal, phenomenal performance. But let's uh, let's go down the rest of it because his two Villanova compatriots did shit offensively. All right, Josh Hart was out was plugged out offensively. Now you're talking about a guy who had 17 rebounds, so it's not like Josh Hart laid down and Dante Vincent, Divincenzo, who was absent the whole game. So they had to rely on 47 of their 97 coming from one dude. The rest of the team scored 50 points. And it wasn't from DiVincenzo and it wasn't from Josh Hart. They got some points from Miles McBride. They got some points from OG Ananobi. And they got really good defensive minutes from Precious Achua. When Hartenstein had to go out of the game with foul trouble, committing five, count them, five fouls, in the third quarter. Now, at that point, when you got to use Precious Achua, you would think the Sixers would have an edge with Embiid down low. So let's talk about the erstwhile Mr. Embiid. And I'm going to read some tweets because social media is just destroying him. He had one point in the fourth quarter. Did not make a field goal. Made one of two free throws late in the game. He was absolutely flat out gassed. Now, why is he gassed? Well, the excuse is that he's obviously coming off surgery and, and he doesn't uh, have the cardiovascular shape to last 45 minutes, which is how long Nick Nurse played him. Uh, so uh, it, it, at a time in the game where you had the ultimate mismatch with Embiid going down low in the post against Precious Achua, and, and forcing the Knicks to double team him and maybe foul him and he gets to the line. How many times did you count Embiid in the post? So there's either two things at work. Either it was Embiid's fault and he was too tired to actually get his butt in the post. And I buy that because I could see that cardio that he was just totally gassed or the head coach sees the mismatch and says, listen, Joe, I know you're feeling bad. I know you're gassed. We got an incredible mismatch here. They don't have Hartenstein, and they don't have Mitchell Robinson. They have Precious Achua playing you. He can't play you. So I'll tell you what, let's work our last offensive possessions by getting you down low. So either you blame Nurse, who maybe wanted to do that, or you blame Embiid for not being, I don't know, ready to do it. So the Sixers... All this, you know, when you have a player like Embiid, who's not carrying you in the fourth quarter, he's got 26 points going into the fourth quarter. 
there has to be the other guy. You know, I hate to use Batman and Robin, but Tyrese Maxey has to be a better player in the fourth quarter. There's only two guys you can rely on to put the ball in the basket. And if the, if the one guy is out on his feet because he played 45 minutes, well, then the other guy's got to find a way to do it. They don't have many other options. What other options do they have? And Kelly Oubre, okay, he made a couple baskets tonight. He got destroyed defensively by Jalen Brunson in the first half. Tobias Harris, you're not going to get anything from Tobias Harris. Melton can't play. Uh, campaign came off the bench and, and made a couple. But they don't have anybody else. It comes down to two guys. For the Knicks, it comes down to one guy, and he delivers. Now, if you're Nick Nurse, do you not know from seeing Embiid in the last few weeks and seeing him in games where he wears out in the fourth quarter, how on earth, then, do you think you can play him for that many minutes in a game? You rested him three minutes in the entire game. And I understand that Paul Reed stinks. And I understand that Mo Bama stinks. However, as a coach, you got to go, guess what? I got to pick that poison. I got to eat up time for Joel Embiid so I can have him in the fourth quarter. Now, maybe if you played Bamba, maybe you played Reed more minutes, the Knicks would have destroyed you. I don't, I don't know if they would have or not. It seemed like only one guy was destroying him the whole time. So I'm thinking that Nick Nurse, that was a critical error for him, A. B, his offensive sets did not include Embiid down low. Maybe it was Embiid. Thirdly, what kind of offense were they running in the fourth quarter? They, they didn't run any appreciable offense in, in the fourth quarter. They had two possessions where they ran the clock down and had to take a desperation shot to beat the clock. One, Maxi missed a wide open look, and the other was in B, got, got his, blo his shot blocked, and they turned it over. What, so what are we talking about? I, listen, I know people love Nick Nurse. I know he's the anti Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers just a loser. You tell me how well that game was coached today by Nick Nurse. It wasn't, folks. And I'm not afraid to criticize anybody here. I don't play favorites. I give people the benefit of the doubt. I criticize them when I think they should be criticized. I don't know where to go on Joel Embiid. I know he disappeared in the fourth quarter. I saw it. And that's what most people are going to say. Uh, he disappeared in the fourth quarter again. There he goes. But it's not the same. It's not the same as disappearing last year against the Boston Celtics. That deserved heavy criticism. This time, he's coming off a of meniscus surgery. He's clearly not cardiovascular shape enough. He didn't play enough games to get that way. To count on him, if you play him 45 minutes in a, in a playoff game, what do you expect to get? Don't you have to make a value judgment if you're a head coach? All right, let's go down the, the critical moments of this game. And, and and let's just go. We'll go down a little at a time because I've got I've got seven minutes worth of play to get, to, to go down because you 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 have to look at almost every possession in this game. All right, so let's get to the fourth quarter. The Knicks went on a six zero run. They took an eighty six eighty one lead, and at that point, I wrote down in my notes: Embiid not dominating in the fourth quarter. Maxi makes a layup, 86-83. Josh Hart gets fouled. He makes two, 88-83. The Knicks are up. Oubre hits a runner. And then Brunson misses. Embiid throws a stupid bowling pass to Maxi. They rule a turnover at first, then they reverse it. So Maxi then makes a runner. 555 left. They're in decent shape. It's 88-87. The Knicks then proceed to miss two shots. Both times they got the offensive rebound. They had 15 offensive rebounds in this game. And if you want a more grisly stat in this game, the New York Knickerbockers has 61 offensive rebounds in this series. 61. Now, in the NBA, you don't see very often four guys crashing the glass. You don't see it because teams are worried about fast break and transition points. The Knicks said, 
What is their transition game? Doesn't look like it's anything to me. Let's crash and try to get another possession. And they did it 15 times in this game and 61 for the series. All right. So in any event, Brunson gets a drive after those offensive rebounds to give him 42 points, put him up 90 to 87. You with me here? All right. Oubre gets the dunk. They're down by a point. The Knicks turn it over. And Maxie has a wide open three that he misses. Wide, flat, open. Good look. McBride then gets fouled by Oubre on a three-point shot. They dodge a bullet because he makes only two of three. So there's still a manageable area here. It's 92 to 89. And then comes the terrible possession part of this game. Embiid misses at the end of a shot clock. The Knicks turn it back over. The Sixers get another possession where Embiid is blocked at the end of the shot clock. So bad offense. Now we go down the other end. Achua gets fouled on the offensive glass. They get a possession out of it. Hart misses a three, but they get two more offensive rebounds. (laughs) Now, they're not scored off these offensive rebounds, but time is ticking away. They're getting possession after possession. Maxie has a step back, good look, misses it. And at 132, Brunson gets fouled by Tobias Harris. Make miss, 93-89. They're still hanging in there. But then on the Sixers' next possession, Tobias misses a three-point shot. And with 55.5 left, Brunson scores again on a, on a, on a play where Embiid was too tired to actually get over and contest it. Brunson had a little bit of shimmy shake. He, he, he got past one defender and he's getting to the, like he had a clear path to the basket. Normally MB, the rim protector has to be there. He's not there. And that is the critical blow because that makes it 95 to 89. And, uh, it, it's funny because at the end, uh, Kyle Lowry is, uh, he, he takes a foul. Before the ball is in bounds. It was a genius play. He's done that his whole career. He kind of grabs a guy, falls, falls back. The guy lands on him. And that's a one-shot foul. And they get possession. Makes the shot. And it, but in B misses going to the basket. And, and Josh Hart gets fouled. Um, they just didn't make enough big plays in the end. And it all comes down to the biggest factor of them all. Your best player couldn't give you anything in the fourth quarter. And that's either because he didn't want to or because the head coach made two terrible errors, not resting him enough during that game to preserve it for the fourth quarter and not running sets that would have forced Embiid to get in the low block with Pretzers at Chua Gardner. The Knicks escaped this game with three of their shooters coming up with bupkis. DiVincenzo, Hart, and Bogdanovich, who got hurt. They won this game without Hartenstein, who's been a pain in the ass the whole series, sitting on the bench after that lunkhead gets five fouls in the third quarter. And they win this game. So the, the conclusion is, really, the Knicks are a much tougher team than the Philadelphia 76ers. It is evident when you watch a team put the effort out that the Knicks put out in this game, a game they should never have won. And they win because they are tough, because they are coached tough, and the Sixers aren't. And so let's bring in producer Darren here, who had to suffer through the whole thing. I tell you, it was a painful exercise to watch that game because it was back and forth, and they were hanging in, hanging in, and it looked like they had control, and then they let it slip away, and just Jalen Brunson just killed them. Your thoughts? Mike, you were much more optimistic about the series than I was. I, mean, I think I told you. Well, I thought they'd they, lose in game seven. I didn't think they were going to lose in game five. I didn't think they were going to win this series. Well, I, yeah, I, I said I, they'll be lucky to win a game. Uh, and look, they, they are a broken record, this team. They really are. Like They, they play – tonight was so sloppy. Sloppy – I think that's what I texted you at one point. Sloppy basketball. I mean, rushed passing. They're getting killed on the boards, and their best player is completely out of gas before the fourth quarter starts. Like it was a recipe for disaster. And I said all along that this Knicks team 
They play good team basketball. They hustle. And they're just tougher than the Sixers. And there's no way that the Sixers could beat a team in a, in a best of seven with those disadvantages when they're that much tougher than you, when they, they have a deeper bench. I, look, yeah, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions about Embiid this offseason, Mike. Are, are we ready for this? Well, of course there's going to be questions about him because it's already coming in. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to go over some tweets in a minute. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't. I, I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't see the whole press conference at the game. I watched a little of it with Nick Nurse. There's only one question that you need to ask Nick Nurse in this game, and I don't know if anybody asked it because I didn't hear an answer from him. Why on earth would you play him 45 minutes? A and B. If he's in the game in the fourth quarter. And they have to go with Precious Achua to guard him. Why did you not work the ball in the low post with him? It's the only question that you should be asking in this game because the game turns on that. You can't have your best player completely on the perimeter invisible with not making a field goal in the fourth quarter. It's mind-boggling to me. And the coach has to take some heat for that. I know people want to take pot shots at Embiid. He is the, the first guy that you want to put a target and a bullseye on. But what are you expecting in the fourth quarter? Are you, people are judging him like he's a 100% healthy guy, and he's not. So you got to manage that as a coach and say, I need him fresh for the fourth quarter. If there's any quarter that I need him fresh for, it's that. So, Paul, I, I got to have you. You got to give me seven minutes here. Bamba, I, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand there and just block a shot at the rim. That's all I need you to do. I don't need you to handle the ball. I don't need anybody throwing you the ball. I don't need you going on a fast break. I need you to eat up five minutes by getting a rebound and protecting the rim because I got to rest my guy. It's my, it's just mind-boggling to me. These fundamental things that I watched in this game, and, and, and he set up MB for criticism. He set him up. I, and I know other people are like, oh, wait, stop making excuses. I'm, I am not making excuses for Joel Embiid. He is what he is. Last year, uh, there is no excuse. This year, he's got an excuse. So you got to coach your way around that. All right. Well, I, I think, Mike, you said on the other podcast that he needs to lose some weight. I don't know if he said about 30 pounds or something. Yes, he needs to lose 30 pounds. What, what about him makes you think he would do that? I, 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 I can't, I listen, I, I don't know. I, I, I can only tell you what I think. Yeah. All right? I, I can only tell you, like, when when, when Sean Bradley was here, <laughs> uh, Pat Croce got him off McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah. I mean, that's what, <laughs> it's up to them yeah. to do what they need to do. So, like, I'm not I'm not paid by the Sixers. Or if they wanted to pay me, I'd go, Joel, you're fat. <laughs> you're fat, and you got to lose 30 pounds. It might hurt your feelings, but I need you to look more like Giannis than you do now. I just hope he can show that discipline and get that done because I think you're right. That's the only way he's going to last. It's the only way he's going to have an extended career in this league. Uh, all right. Um, let's let's get to the NBA quotes. Um, Joel will not go down deep and work. He would rather be the best three-point shooting seven-footer than a dominant post player and destroy underneath. Well, that's just foolish because when he's making threes, you're all about it. Right, he didn't even shoot a three in, in the fourth quarter. He was too gassed to shoot a freaking three. Um, all right, uh, Nick did not have a good game with his rotations, play calling, can't give up on his bench. Players were gassed during crunch time. Um, uh, I'm not saying anything bad on Joel. He played basically the entire game because B ball consistently gets destroyed. Yeah, all right, I'm with you. I'm not a Paul Reed guy. He still doesn't know what he's doing out there after all these years in the league. But you got to take the chance. And if you're not getting it from Paul Reed, then you got to use Bamba. It's really as simple as that. You don't have a choice at this point. Your choice is, do I play and be 45 minutes or do I try to grip my teeth with Bamba? I, and you know what the answer to that question is. And with 40, if you're playing him 45 minutes, what do you think he's going to be? All right. And Bede was totally spent, says one tweeter. I'm not sure whether or not he could have executed set plays to any effect. Like uh, many other things, Doc probably wasn't as bad as we thought, nor Nick not as good as we expected. All right. 
Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Now, people, people rip me about Kelly Oubre. I, I look at the box score and it looks like he had a good game. Was Kelly Oubre a factor in this game? Did, did he, did he, was anybody afraid of Kelly Oubre's presence on the court? I mean, he's, I texted you. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm asking quizzotically. Yeah, I know. Whether anybody, whether he threw the fear of God into anybody while he's on the floor, while he was getting destroyed to the point where they had to put Maxie on Jalen Brunson. Kelly Bray got destroyed so bad. Maxie, you can't play D either, but you want to take a shot at him? Uh, here is another one. Embiid. Blame the coach, Mike, when a guy making $40 million can't make a clutch shot to make it a one-point game with 124 left. All right, you're judging that based on that you think Embiid is healthy. I don't know what game you're watching. He wasn't healthy. He was gassed. You want to blame him for being gassed? Okay. Now, my counter to that is, that guy just had surgery. What do you, what do you think he's going to be? He's going to run a marathon? Huh? He's Frank Shorter coming into the, the Tokyo Olympics. All right. Here it is. Choke artist Bum Bead strikes again. Never shows up in game four at home. Here's another one. And B needs to be traded. Seriously. Let's stop kidding ourselves. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's the knee jerk reaction. So I say to you this. You trade Embiid. What are you? Yeah, tell me, what what are you, if you trade Embiid, what kind of a team are you at that point? Who who do you get in that kind of a situation to make yourself a contending team if you trade Joel Embiid? I don't think you're anybody trapped. has any idea what he's worth right now. But, but, right? but you're trapped. You, you, you can't, you're not going to make yourself better by trading Embiid. You are trapped with the rest of his career here because you can't do any better. And if you say to me, well, that's hopeless, then I go, okay, it is. I, I'm, I'm never that guy that says it's hopeless because I say, you're not going to be better with me trade and beat. So you got to figure out a way to do it. This wasn't it. The general manager did not complete this team enough this year. Again, this is now th like three years in a row we're talking about where it, we come into the season with all this hope. Oh, look what Daryl did. He got Joe Blow and he got, uh, you know, Manny over here and he's got you know, all a deep bench. He's got squat. Look at them now. Look at them. Well, well all that's work that Max Lee, uh, that, um, uh, um, Maury supposedly did to prep for this season. Where did that go? It evaporated like, like, uh, smoke and pot in the wind. It's all gone. All right. <laughs> Let's go over the box score. I just, I just sit here and I go, I, I, seriously, Jalen Brunson, I, I am just wowed by this kid. I, he is just ferocious and fearless and gets his shot off against anybody. I mean, he, he bewildered Embiid on one drive. Where, yeah, he threw it over, he threw it over Embiid because he's so crafty. He gets everybody off balance and, and they can't jump in time to block a shot. And Anobi had 16. Hardstein, he was a pig in this game. He had eight early. Brunson, 47 points, 10 assists, one turnover. Josh Hart, I keep telling people, he can't shoot a lick. What are you talking about? Look at all those threes you made. Oh, you know about basketball. He, 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 he went back to Josh Hart, the shot putter, today. 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 3 from 3, but... Get this. Five offensive rebounds and 12 defensive rebounds. The kid's 6'5". Plays like a maniac. All right. DiVincenzo. Dante. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't know. You, you got a party going on in Delaware when you came back here last night? Would they have at their Middletown, Delaware, or Wilmington, or wherever you're from? Did you have a little party? Dante was three for 11. And he, he, he and Hart had one point collectively going into halftime. But Precious Yachua gave him 20 minutes off the, off the bench, and he was a plus 11. Scored one point, Achua did, but played pretty good defense and had seven rebounds. Bogdanovich played a minute. They got nothing from Bogdanovich. And Miles McBride made three threes for 13. It, 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 
Brunson's the whole story. <laughs> I mean, it's just really, when you look at the Knicks offensively, you go, who else contributed offensively to this team? They couldn't stop that little bugger. All right, let's go look at the Sixers. Oh, Mike, I think was it like the third quarter where we said, well, we knew we was going to wake up sooner or later, right? No, he woke up in the last two games. It's been phenomenal. Uh, uh, Tobias Harris, uh, he had 10 points, was a minus seven. Uh, and Bede had uh, 27 points, but 12 of those came from the foul line. He made one of six three pointers. He had 10 rebounds, defensive, not one offensive rebound that he had. Uh, Kyle Lowry, oh, come on, one for six. I mean, he's 38 years old. We're, we're expecting him to be a, a Ja Morant, for crying out loud. Uh, and Kelly Oubre, he played 40 minutes. All right, maybe I'm uh, underjudging him. He had 19 points, but he was still a minus four. And off the bench, they got a grand total of six points. They got two th- – uh, they got six, five from Cameron Payne <laughs> and Sacre Bleu, 21 minutes of nothing for Nick Batum. He scored one point, which is one more point than a dead man. Six total right. off the bench. I, I don't know what to say at this point. This, the series, for my money, you, you're not going to con me into thinking the Sixers can make this a series. That team plays too hard. That other team plays too hard for them to slip. And, and 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 lose games. They won't lose games defensively alone because the Sixers don't have enough offense to counter what the Knicks do defensively. And they don't have enough balls to compete with the Knicks on the glass. It's really it's really simple. This was a game they had to win to make it a series. Even if they won this game, I found it very difficult to believe that they, they could win two games, one or two games at, at the Garden. Uh, I didn't think it was going to happen. So it, it makes your... It makes your your basketball season a little short, is all it does. And now you you got to look at you, you got to wait for freaking mini camps and follow the Phillies after they get to the sixty game mark, because now you are left with a void because the Sixers will not win Game Five. Mike, I think a lot of people thought the season ended two months ago when Embiid went down with the knee. I think a lot of people mourned the season at that point. Well, whether they did that or not, they were still in it. In this series, I didn't think beating the Knicks was going to be that daunting a task, except for the home court advantage, because right. the Knicks aren't exactly a firepower team, but they have one guy who just who just anoints them and lifts them up, and uh, you know that dude is special, and that dude is really fun to watch. So the Knicks win it tonight, ninety-seven to ninety-two. They take an insurmountable three-one lead in the series. Uh, the next game is what Tuesday night at the Garden. Yes. Tuesday night at the Garden, I believe, will be the end of your Sixers season. So, thanks for hanging out with us on the Mike Masselli Podcast, brought to you by Bet Rivers, a special post-game podcast. We will be, uh, be on with another uh, podcast on Tuesday, where we'll talk more about the Eagles draft, and we'll preview uh, Game 5 at Madison Square Garden. Early line, uh, by the way, Mike, for Tuesday is next three and a half. Knicks three and a half? Three and a That's half. That's all? The 204 and a half total. Well, three and a half is a slow, a, a slender line. It's almost a sixer line. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Don't, <laughs> don't, do worst, don't do it. Don't do it. What's <laughs> the worst thing that could happen here? Like, the, the Sixers win game five. They come back here. They win game six. And then they lose game seven uh, like they've done many times. On, now we're getting the the seven. Is that the torture they're going to put the <laughs> Now we're getting them to game seven. Come on. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. Uh, to me, it, this is like a mercy killing. Lose game five, get the season over with. Out of the your strategy from this point on, Cut. and let the people call Sports Talk Radio about how much they hate Joel Embiid. Thanks for listening, everybody. Enjoy your Sunday, and we'll be back with another podcast on Tuesday, right here. It's the Mike Masnelli Podcast on Bet Rivers. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>